Hello, and welcome to Girl STEM Academy. In this multi-part series, we are going to learn how to code in Java. Be sure to check out our last videos on recursion and primitive variables. In addition, check out our video on 1D arrays and 1D array interview questions. In this video, we are learning about 2D arrays and their relation to memory, then going through some examples. In the next video, we will walk through commonly tested questions regarding 2D arrays. 2D arrays are useful for many different things. Grid structures are often built on 2D arrays. This is used for coding games such as 2048 or Snake. We can also think of 2D arrays as a table, such as what we might encounter in a spreadsheet. As we discussed in the video about 1D arrays, 2D arrays similarly take up a consecutive chunk of memory. Java stores 2D arrays as an array of arrays. Each element of the outer array has a reference to the inner array. When coding in Java, we typically use row major order which means we read the elements row by row. In other words, we read the elements starting from 0, 0, then we go to the right to 0, 1, and then we keep going all the way to 0, 5, and then we go to 1, 0. Column major order would consist of us starting at 0, 0, then going to 1, 0, then going to 2, 0, and so on. Like 1D arrays, 2D arrays use random access memory. So when we have to get and set items, it is an O of 1 operation. In other words, it is a very, very fast operation that is completed in constant time. In one of our future videos, we will talk more about the big O for array operations. As you watch this video, please click the subscribe button and click notifications on. It really makes a big difference for us to create good video content. So how do we initialize a 2D array? 2D arrays have a similar syntax to 1D arrays. To initialize a 2D array, the syntax is our data type, two sets of brackets with nothing in them, the name of our array, equals new, our data type once more, and then inside our first set of brackets, we have our number of rows, and inside our next set of brackets, we have our number of columns. These can have different values. Alternatively, we can use our data type, two sets of empty brackets, the name of our array, equals, and then our curly brackets, and inside that set of curly brackets, we have another set of curly brackets that specify each of our values, then a comma, then another set that specifies more values. Each of these represent a different row. As we were saying earlier, 2D arrays are stored as an array of arrays, and that is demonstrated by the second initialization. The second method is how jagged arrays which means each row has a different number of columns, are initialized. Notice how for both initializations, like with 1D arrays, the size of the array is clear. With 2D arrays, we cannot change the size or add more elements past the maximum. To do that, we have to allocate more memory with a new 2D array and copy all the elements to the new array. Let's put some of our array knowledge to use. To do this, I will be using the Eclipse IDE. First, let's initialize an array. I will be using an array of strings. So first we put our data type, then we put two sets of empty brackets, then the name of my array equals new, our data type again, then in our first set of brackets, the number of rows, and in our second set of brackets, the number of columns. This means that there are two rows and three columns in my array. Alternatively, I can also do 
the same left initialization. But now I'm going to do the curly brackets version. So first I have a set of curly brackets which represents my entire 2D array. And now I have another set of curly brackets inside of that which is going to represent my first row. And now for my second row, another set of curly brackets. As we discussed with 1D arrays, everything in 2D arrays is done with indices. As we did with our 1D arrays, to add elements, we place our desired row and in column index in the brackets and set it equal to the value. So for my first array, which I have no values yet, I would do my array and then I specify what indices, so maybe the first element I want to change or add to. And now that is equal to coding. So if I print it out, we will see that it is equal to coding. What if I wanted to change an element? So as we can see now, this element here in the first row and third column place is called Java. What if I change it? So I can do that again by using my indices. So the first row is zero because remember, all arrays start at index zero. Then my third column is actually element two or place two. Now if I print that out, it would have changed the value from Java to Python. Let's run it. And as you can see, it printed out coding and Python. To get elements, we use a very similar syntax. For example, we can do string element equals my array known. And then I want to get something in the second row, so that's index one. And then the, the last place again, so that's index two. And now I'm going to print out my element. And as you can see, it prints out awesome. So let's traverse 2D arrays. Recall that with 1D arrays, we needed a while loop or a for loop to traverse each element. However, to traverse a 2D array, we will need two for loops, one to go through each row and one to go through each column. In each row, there are three elements, as that is the number of columns, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And there are two rows. Thus, there are two times three, which equals six elements in the 2D array. So to traverse all six elements, we not only need two for loops, but we need them to be nested. So let's write our for loops. For the outer for loop, we want to traverse each row. Remember that all arrays start at index zero. So it starts at zero and it goes to the length of the array. So this represents the number of rows. Now for the inner for loop, 
we also start at zero, and we can think of each row as a horizontal 1D array. Remember the image that we showed earlier, how a 2D array is built up of an array of arrays. So we can think of each row as a horizontal 1D array that we covered in the last video. So we can do C is less than my array known and specify a row. So that's one row of the array and then the length of that row. So once more, this outer for loop will go through each of the rows. So it covers this row and then it goes to this row. The inner for loop goes to each of the rows and finds the length of one row, which is three in this case, and goes through each of the elements. Then it goes to the next row and goes to each of the elements. As with 1D arrays, index out of bounds exceptions are really easy to get. So we have to be sure that we're using a less than sign here rather than a less than or equal to sign. This is because array indices go from zero to the length minus one. Now we can print each element using the getting function that we covered before. So this is my array known, and then our row and our column. So just so it prints nicely, I'm going to put a space in between the elements of each row and then a line between each row itself. And as you can see, it prints out, I love Python because we changed it. It is awesome. So there you have it. This was an introduction to 2D arrays to show you how they work and how to use them. In the next video, we will go over common interview and test question examples to put 2D arrays to use. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about arrays in Java. If you want to see any other video from us on any topic or specific Java concept that interests you, please mention it in the comments below. Check out our other videos on the metaverse and crypto. Please click the subscribe button to support us so we can add more content every week. Thank you for watching.